It was December 2012. I was working for a company that was going through some challenging times. We all knew that changes were going to have to be made. I developed shingles from the day-to-day -day stress. I met with an industrial psychologist to assess what my future looked like. I sat down with my boss. We both agreed at that time that to continue to grow my future, I would probably have to move on. We agreed that I would take six months to transition out of my role. Going into Christmas and New Year's that year were the darkest hours of my life. Two young children at home, a new house that we had to close on in the next six months, a house we still hadn't sold. I couldn't afford that while I was employed, let alone if I was unemployed. Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, I had a choice to make going into 2013. Would I fold under the pressure or push through the adversity? Today, I'm going to tell you about the choice I made how I made it, and what I've learned since then. Resilience. Resilience was the choice I made. Eric Greitens defines resilience as the virtue that enables people to move through hardship and become better, to persist through adversity. How did I actually make that choice though? I don't think I did. I think what I did was I fell to how I had trained myself. We all like to think that when we're faced with adversity, we're going to rise up. What the research shows though, is that we tend to fall to the level of our training. What I actually did do was I took that report from the industrial psychologist because I knew that I had to work on my game to become better. I specifically focused on one of the mantras they gave me. Slow down, listen, be more patient and reflective. I read every one of the books they recommended. One of them was absolutely life-changing. Feeling Good, The New Mood Therapy by Dr. David Burns. It was a cognitive behavioral therapy book it struck a chord, so simple, yet so profound. I needed to learn more. Cognitive behavioral therapy took me to stoicism, to mindfulness, to Buddhism. I kept reading and learning. Along the way, I also started studying emotional intelligence. That all came together in 2020. One of the emotional intelligence books I'm reading is titled Resilience. One of the Stoicism books that I'm reading, which was the Eric Greitens book I mentioned, is titled Resilience. Given everything that we are all seeing, feeling, and living through in 2020, what better topic to research than resilience? Resilience, Eric defines as or sorry, on the first step to resilience is for each of us to take responsibility for who we are and for our lives. And how we define that responsibility is the acceptance of the consequences of our actions. We aren't responsible for what happens to us. We are responsible for how we react to what happens to us, whether that's in our mind or in our actions. The research that I've done on resilience shows that people that are resilient tend to share three common characteristics. A staunch acceptance of reality, a deep belief that life is meaningful, and they possess an uncanny ability to improvise. With respect to reality, resilient people tend to be down to earth and pragmatic in their approach to reality. They plan for the best and prepare for the worst often contingency planning. With respect to meaning, value systems are very important to resilient people and resilient organizations. 
Take, for example, Viktor Frankl and James Stockdale. In Viktor Frankl's book, Man's Search for Meaning, he chronicles his time spent in a German concentration camp. James Stockdale, in his memoir, talks about his time as a prisoner of war interned in a Jap Japanese war camp. Each of these men not only survived, but thrived because they both had a deep belief in the meaning of their individual lives. Despite the atrocities that they witnessed and endured, they chose their reactions. They both chose their thoughts. The last thing to talk about for resilience in the research is about failure. Almost all of the reading on resilience I did talked about failure. Eric says that failure is a beginning, not an end. To push through, to keep going. The key to resilience is trying really hard, stopping, recovering, then trying again and again. I fail every day. I fail as a coach, as a father, as a husband, as a colleague, as an author, as an athlete. And then I get up and I try again. And I keep trying until I don't fail. And then I set harder goals so that I will fail because that's how I believe I become better. So what happened to the choice I made in 2013? I ended up getting hired at Mosaic Homes, which is a company that has a values-based system very similar to my own. I've managed to grow into the CFO role there, and I plan to be there until I retire or ultimately change careers. I started writing a fantasy novel series with my sister. We just finished our first book last month. Through cognitive behavioral therapy, mindfulness, stoicism and Buddhism, I've managed to continue on the path to pursue my mission, purpose and dreams. Fellow Toastmasters, what can we all do today to start on our path to learn more about resilience and where it can take us? Madam Toastmaster. Woo!